What's up, guys? You know, whenever you buy a used or a new RV, it doesn't matter whether you have a pull-behind trailer, a fifth wheel, a motorhome, a toy hauler, it doesn't matter. These are very important things. We're gonna cover that right now, coming up on RV Street. The first thing I want to mention here is that this is not just some phony baloney, another must-have videos. This video is something I've been wanting to do for a long time because this is so important. Over the time we've been traveling, we have seen so many people that are not prepared and they run into problems that they should not have to happen. I was really, I mean, there's so many important things you should have with you at all times. And I really had to narrow it down to the most important. So I'm really going to try to be comprehensive in this one. Uh, it's going to be a little lengthy, but um, I can assure you uh, it's going to be very informative. And um, so I hope you stick with me. So let's get right to it. So number one, the most important thing that you should carry with you is all of your manuals. When we bought our motorhome, we got a black bag and it had some of the manuals, but it didn't have all of them. I keep, the, I carry this in our motorhome above the cab at all times, but I immediately realized, man, I got a lot of searching to do. So I went online to all the different things that I needed to keep track of and manuals. So I got everything on the chassis, wiring diagrams, plumbing diagrams, greasing uh, points that you have to do on there, the refrigerator, the hot water heater, everything, all of the manuals, all of the instruction sheets, all of the service manuals that I could get my um, hands on. And in addition to that, I have just tons of folders in my computer covering everything from electrical uh, to insurance, dehumidifying, furnace, generator, oil changes, you name it. These, are, these folders have links to things that I have learned over time. And I'm like, oh, that's a really good video. I'm keeping that one. And I make a folder for it. And you open up each one of those folders, and I'm telling you, there are scores of really important information that, you know, I don't need it now, but I'll need it later. Or I may need it later. Those of you who have been in the military like me, you know that being prepared is the most important thing. You prepare and you train. You prepare and you train. And so what I'm showing you today is to be prepared so that when something happens or you get somewhere, you're going to be ready and you'll save yourself a whole lot of grief. So again, the first thing is manuals, documents, and so forth. And don't forget also, the stuff that you download electronically, make sure you back it up. <laughs> oh, and by the way, when you get all those manuals, read them. The next thing that's kind of in this same grouping is have at least one set of spare keys and have them hidden somewhere. I know that if you're a couple, the husband probably has a set wife has a set or your traveling partner, whatever, you probably both have a set in your pocket or purse or whatever, but you need to have at least another set stored somewhere hidden in the event that you lose your, your keys. And the third thing in this group is to carry critical parts. Now I've read a lot of people online, as I've told you before, I'm online a lot, and other people say, man, I've carried critical parts and never used them, waste of time, waste of money. Well, let me tell you something. I know you all have learned what I have learned during this COVID thing. All of a sudden, nobody has anything. Priorities change. They're not gonna be stocking this and that. They're going to be shifting priorities and shipping groceries and shipping toilet paper and all these other things. So critical parts, for example, I carry a SureFlow water pump because to us, a water pump we use all the time. It's critical. And as luck would have it, on our way up here to Maine, this trip where we are right now, the very last campground that we were at, 
our pump went out. So I'm going to be replacing our water pump, and yes, there'll be a video on that. So critical parts, things that you really need while you're on the go, and you need them now. You don't want to have to find a place to order them. Can they mail them here? You want to carry those. Okay, so let's move on to the second group. You need a surge protector. Well, not really a surge protector. What you need is an EMS, an electronic management system. It looks something very similar to this. Now we used to have a trailer before we got our motor home and we didn't know anything then. And we ended up buying this surge guard surge protector. And it's not an EMS, but we didn't have our trailer very long. And when we sold it, we kept this. A portable EMS is what you plug into the electrical pedestal and that EMS is going to tell you right off the bat whether the pedestal is wired correctly, it'll monitor surge, uh, surges or, or power fluctuations either high or low, and it can save you a ton of money in the event that you plug into a bad electrical pe pedestal. If you've been around any time at all, you know that a lot of these parks, they're old. And these electrical pedestals, they can be wired wrong. Or in a situation where you go to a park and they're loaded during summertime and everyone's running their AC and the electricity starts to fluctuate within the campground. Your EMS is going to detect that and it's going to shut off or, or allow power to come through as necessary so you don't ruin your electronics in the, in the RV. As you know, and especially in these newer coaches, the RV is loaded with all kinds of electronic devices and monitors and sensors and TVs and microwaves, air conditioners. You want to make sure you've got clean power coming in to the coach. What I did is I installed a hardwired EMS. And since we have this already from the trailer, what Joni does, if you'll see right here, she always, when we get ready to pull into a campground, she'll walk up and she'll test. She'll plug this in and she'll look at the lights and it'll tell her whether we're good to go. We want to know that first before we go through all the backing in and leveling. All. We want to know before we even get in that site whether the power is good to go. So we decided to keep this because we have a hardwired EMS in our electrical bay. I installed a hardwired EMS. And you can see that what I actually did is I, this cord was one cord, and this is the power cord that you plug into a pedestal. In order to install a hardwired unit, you cut the cord right here. And this is what it looks like inside here. You have to wire the outside, this side here, this, this wire here goes into the transfer case. It comes out of the transfer case, goes into the EMS, and then out the EMS to the electrical pedestal. On the side here, you can see I have a little cord here that comes up into the digital display, I mean. One other thing that some people do is instead of wiring their LED readout here, Many people will take this cable right here and they'll run it up and into the coach and they'll have this mounted in a convenient place where they can just monitor and see inside the coach. To me, that wasn't important. I didn't want to go through all that. I just decided to mount mine right here uh, on this panel in the electrical bay. When you buy this hardwired EMS, it comes with an option. There's a little clip that you can add at the bottom that allows you to do a two minute delay. And I decided to insert that option. I put that little clip in that little space right there. So let's just say for an example, you lose power. You're in a, you're in a park where all of a sudden, uh, the power just went out. What that does is when the power comes back on, it just doesn't come back immediately and jolt the system. The power will come on, the EMS will wait two minutes to make sure that that electrical power is stable 
and then it'll send it to the coach. So I opted to insert that when I installed this unit, but I just wanted to make you aware, uh, you know, if you decide to do this install yourself, it can be done. Uh, you probably need, you know, a pretty good skill set, some strong hands, because again, when you're bringing this big old set of wires in here and this big old set coming in here, uh, it's tight in there. Uh, but, you know, it's definitely doable. I screwed the back of this uh, case into the back of the bay. And, uh, but I wanted to basically show you that option, that two minute delay option. Um, I think that's a very good thing to do. So by having this hardwire system, it's permanent. It's inside a bay. Whenever we wire up, we plug in, we close the bay, the bay door and we lock it up. So we are always protected by the hardwire. Even though I'm hardwired with an EMS, I always want to also have another piece here. And again, I said, this is a, this is a surge protector. It really should be an EMS, uh, but I'm protected by an EMS. I have it back there. So if you're starting out and you don't have either, you at least have to have an EMS right here, a portable. You would plug this into your power supply, pour, uh, plug your coach into that. I have chosen to be redundant. I plug, I test the pedestal with this and I plug it into this and I plug my coach into here. That way, if anything goes wrong with the pedestal or a surge in the campground or what have you, low voltage, this is going to take the hit and I'm not gonna to have to disconnect the one I have in my electrical bay and send it in for service. Now, I prefer having the hardwired version inside the coach in addition to this. So if you do not have a portable, at least a portable EMS to plug in to the pedestal before you plug in the coach, you need to get one. If you have a hardwired one, I suggest you put a secondary one there. It can be a surge protector or a portable EMS. That way you're protected on both ends with an EMS. And if you ever sell the coach, you can leave the hardwired one on the coach and keep your portable and move it to the next RV. And the portable EMS that I'm gonna recommend is gonna have a weather guard that goes over the, over the connector. And there's been a lot of chatter. Uh, I've seen uh, people talk online about, uh, yeah, well, portable EMSs, People can steal those things. They can just unplug them and walk away with them. I'm gonna tell you, out of the four years we've been RVing, I have not ever heard of anyone stealing. But if it'll make you more comfortable, get your little bicycle lock, you know, the plastic covered cable type, put it around the pedestal in your EMS, lock it up, and that'll maybe give you some more uh, comfort, confidence, and some insurance. One last note about having an EMS and protecting your electrical coming into the RV. If you see a severe storm coming, like we did when we were coming up here to Maine, we were going through uh, Oklahoma and Missouri. Man, we had warnings all over the place. Tornadoes, hail, thousands of lightning strikes a minute, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and they also had like 70 mile an hour winds. When you see these kind of severe storms coming, don't take any chances. When you see the storm coming, go to the pedestal and just unplug. Just unplug. And we also brought in our slides. We weren't gonna have our toppers all uh, ripped to shreds with the high winds. Wait till the storm passes, then go back and plug it back in. Okay, let's move along to the next subject. A multimeter. Every person that owns an RV needs to carry with them at all times, and know where it is, <laughs> a multimeter. Now, as I've uh, shared with you guys in the past, when it comes to fixing things mechanically, I can pretty well tackle anything and get it done. Electric has always been kind of my Achilles heel. When Joni and I first bought our motorhome and all the stuff that's involved there electrically, it kind of was overwhelming at first. But now, four years down the road, I'm pretty darn comfortable with it, but I do know when I'm up over my head or beyond my pay grade. But a multimeter. What's it do? It's a diagnostic tool. It has two probes, a negative and a positive, and you're able to diagnose and test an asundry different AC 
and DC items. AC meaning all of your 110, 50 amp, 30 amp, all that stuff coming in. And DC meaning all of your 12 volt stuff, okay? Like your house batteries or let's say you had a couple of these and they were old. You didn't know if they were good or not. You can test this battery right here to see if it's still good. It, it can test anything electrically. It can, te it can test the continuity of something. If you have something acting up and you're not really sure whether it's the motor or whether it's this or that, you can check it with a multimeter. Now, looking at a multimeter, to those of us who are uninformed and uneducated on how we, when we first use it, it's like, oh man, that looks really complicated. Yes, it is intimidating looking, but I'm gonna tell you, it's not that hard to learn, especially the basics. And there are a ton of videos on YouTube that'll teach you how to use one of these. Now, why do you need one? Let's say you're out in the middle of a campground somewhere and all of a sudden XYZ is not working right. You call, you call warranty or you call a mobile tech and one of the first things he's going to say is, do you have a multimeter? I'll walk you through it. Well, if you don't have one, guess what? He ain't walking you through it. There's nothing he can do remotely without you at least being able to have some of the basic testing tools. So, multimeter. If you don't have one of these, you need to get one and get it soon, okay? Let's move along to the next subject. Dog bones. No, not those kind of dog bones. These kind of dog bones. <laughs> and this kind of dog bone. And so forth. What are these things? Well, they allow you to adapt down. Uh, some people will call these adapters. Some people will call them step downs. I call them dog bones. Doesn't that look like a dog bone? <laughs> But again, whether you have a travel trailer, a fifth wheel, or a motorhome, and it doesn't matter whether you have 30 amp or 50 amp, you need to be able to step down because when you get to where you're going, even if you have reservations for, a, say, a 50 amp site, guess what? There may not be a 50 when you get there. And so here you got a 30 amp. You need to be able to plug in the 30 and step it down to plug in your 50. Here's even a better one, like here in Maine. We don't have 50, we don't have 30, we don't have 20, we don't have any pedestal at all. You know what we have? An, a, a garage outlet, a 110 garage outlet. We're running and will be running all summer on 15 amps. But up here in Maine, it's plenty. We don't have to run our ACs and we just manage what we have turned on at the same time. But I did a clip yesterday and kind of explained how we run that 15 amp uh, garage outlet to our coach. So just take a quick look at that. So we're parked up here in Maine and we are a 50 amp coach, but the only available power here is the garage. So I ran an extension cord, a 12 gauge extension cord and I ran it to my first dog bone, which is right here. This dog bone, I plug in the 110 here, and that converts it up to a 50 amp female plug. Then I put my 50 amp surge protector into that, and my 50 amp plug that goes to the coach plugs into that. You never know what you're gonna run into when you park somewhere. It could be in an emergency. It could be a campground. It could be anywhere. You never know what's going to be available where you're going to be able to plug in. And so you're going to want a good assortment of different dog bones or reducers and also a protecting unit so you'll have all bases covered. So for those of you who say that, well, if I need one, I'll just run to the store and get one. Well, Joni and I have really been paying attention to the inventory of RV stuff for places like Walmart and stuff like that when we go to these stores. I'm going to tell you, it's, it, it's not been pretty. Uh, again, because of priorities on what they want to sh ship and keep their, what they want to bring in on the loads and so forth. Heck, I couldn't even find an oil filter for the coach. And they always have oil filters. So again, just to be prepared like the military, keep an assortment of dog bones. One last thing, this is probably not uh, apply to a lot of people, 
But we did run into this situation a couple of times. An extension 50 amp cord. If you have a 30 amp, you get a 30 amp cord. I'll tell you a quick story. We went to Florida a couple of years ago to an Encore park. And again, it was an older park. It had a, it had a, you know, it was peppered with uh, park models and sites all in between and so forth. Well, they told us where to park. We backed in, and heck, the electrical outlet was way over there. I mean, it was like 40 feet away. And I'm like, okay, my cord's 30 feet. How am I? How do they expect me to get over there? Well, we had an extension cord with us. We carry this in the car. We do not use the room or the weight in our motorhome. We carry this in the trunk up underneath where the spare tire is. It comes with a handle. And I'll tell you another thing about the, the importance of these. Some national parks and state parks where you back into, that pedestal will be like in between two coaches and you'll share a, a pedestal. And there's a long reach sometimes of those things. So this is not for everybody, but again, if you wanna to be totally prepared in case you end up in one of those situations, you don't have to worry. You have an extra extension cord on hand. Okay, we're gonna end this right now because as you can see, we're already approaching the 22 minute mark. And I've noticed over time that any video that gets over to be 15 minutes or more, some people begin just to drop off, they move on to something else. So I try to keep it within 15 or 20 at the most. So we're gonna stop right here. But I really appreciate you guys staying with me this long. I mean, it's for all of our benefit, right? When I initially planned to do this video, I thought I was gonna be able to cram everything in one video. <laughs> and I quickly realized, holy mackerel, this thing's gonna be long. There ain't no way anybody's gonna watch this thing. So I broke it up into three parts. This is part number one. Part two and part three are coming. Part two will be next Sunday night at 8.30, like always. And then part three will be the Sunday after that. And both of those parts are gonna be packed with some really good information, so don't miss out on that. This whole series was created so that you will have on board at all times, crucial, very important things to have so you can avoid a lot of common made problems or be able to address emergencies and stuff like that. This can save you a lot of money and damage and a whole lot of grief and frustration when something all of a sudden happens and now you don't have the right gear or you don't have the know-how on how to take care of it. In this video, I have covered a lot of items and I have hand chosen with my experience products that I can fully recommend that will deliver the mission. They're made by companies that have great reputations, great customer service, and they are reliable. All you have to do is go to the top of the video page and look down to where you see show more. Click that, scroll down, and I'll have links to everything that we've talked about right there. So as usual, guys, if you liked this video, if it was helpful, like, wow, Martin, that was really good information, give me a like button and, and give me some comments. Because when I see those things, I'm like, okay, they like these kind of videos. I'll do more of them. If you haven't subscribed, Consider subscribing and ring the bell off to the right so you'll be notified the next time we upload our next video. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around. <laughs>